The government just passed a massive environmental bill that's going to make it rain. And no, I'm not just talking about drought reduction. Now this bill is basically just a shopping list of things that the federal government wants to buy, while of course in the background mandating the leasing of vast areas of public lands and offshore drilling contracts. It's the largest oil and gas lease sale in United States history. Great thing to be reading about when you're researching an environmental protection bill. So with all those sorts of ideas thrown into your head, let's get into the meat of the thing. Now as I mentioned at the top of this episode, this bill is mostly focusing on paying people and entities to make environmentally friendly decisions. Now this encompasses a few different things, for example, individual incentives. Oi, you there, choosing between an electric car and a gas guzzler? Well, why doesn't Uncle Sam just put a few thousand bucks on the electric vehicle side of the scale and, uh, that tipping anything for you? Or maybe you want to put on some solar panels or just retrofit your house to make it more fuel efficient. Tell you what, you do that and there's a rebate check in the mail for you. Now I could provide an itemized list of every single incentive for individuals in this bill, but oh boy, that would be like a dramatic reading of a CVS receipt. <clears throat> Bread, $4. Almond milk, $5. Instead, just know that if you're looking to do something green, you could end up with some green in your pocket. Now in a similar vein, this would also pay corporations to clean up their act. One of the largest polluting sectors in America is our heavy manufacturing. Apparently, they're currently burning a Charles Dickens level of coal to produce the heat required to produce certain items. Now this bill sort of throws up its hand like a cool dad and says, all right, I'm not gonna make you guys change your behavior, burn as much coal as you want. But if you wanna start adopting more fuel efficient forms of manufacturing, there's going to be a major tax credit with your name on it. Now the same thing goes for people like grid operators. You want to start buying more renewable energy? Well, let me stretch my check right hand really quick and uh, yeah, we got you covered. Now this part of the strategy is a bit more controversial for some people because it largely revolves around paying the worst offenders to stop offending so much. So that's the first part of the bill, paying people and entities to change their behaviors. Now the next similar part of this bill is paying people and entities who want to start new ventures. Want to start a solar panel manufacturing company? Tell you what, we'll give you some grant money, meaning you don't have to pay it back, and maybe some tax relief on top of that. And of course, on top of all that, we got the previously mentioned promise to pay people on the back end for buying your products. Only catch is, you got to build this stuff domestically. Oof, yeah, no cheap Chinese manufacturing here. To make this funding sustainable, this legislation not only sets out a bunch of money for grants and business loans, but also puts $27 billion toward the creation of an entirely new green bank. If you got a green project and you want some money for it, say 20 years from now, well, don't wait in a bank line with any number of other projects and industries. Instead, go to the green bank, sign up with them, and jump in front of that line. Now, these are still loans that are going to need to be paid back with interest on top, but the focus of the guy evaluating your application is going to be largely on the environment, as opposed to profitability or other factors where an oil company could traditionally outmaneuver you for financing. Now the last major thing this bill does is change the way that fossil fuel companies can buy land for drilling. There are a lot of moving parts with this final piece of the legislation, including the aforementioned largest land lease in United States history. Now before we get into all that, I just want to highlight a line that occasionally gets blurred in a lot of our political coverage. The United States government and oil companies are not one in the same. Now, unlike most countries, America's entire oil industry is privatized. Now, this leads to foreign and domestic companies all coming together to compete for leasing contracts of public auctions. Heck, British Petroleum is one of the largest drillers on American land, 
and uh, something about that name doesn't really scream red, white, and blue. Now, I mention this separation because when I talk about how America is auctioning off public land, you might sort of picture Biden just getting on the horn with ExxonMobil and saying, behind the door between me and you, I'm going to be selling a lot of land, you interested? In reality, it's about 15 or so drilling companies from around the world coming together to fight for drilling rights on our land. Heck, sometimes even protesters show up to these auctions and just bid up the prices. Now, the only reason this stuff is really hush hush is because no one talks about it or really cares about it very much. So let's get to the major auction house changes. The first thing we're doing differently is we're going to start valuing our land a little more. This bill substantially increases the minimum bid for leasing public lands from $2 per acre to $10 per acre. Now, now feel free to go above that $10 mark, but that's our new auction house jumping off point. Now in a similar vein, we got royalties. Countries across the globe that allow private companies to come in and drill on their oil fields scrape a little bit off of the top. Oh, you made $100 selling our oil from our land. Congratulations, I'm just going to wet my beak with 10 of those dollars. Now at the end of the day, it's my land and you're just leasing it, so you got to pay me a little bit on top. Now here America is increasing our top scraping from one eighth of revenue generated to one sixth of revenue generated. Scraping a little off the top and now the middle. Now with these changes America is setting itself up to make a ton more money off of the leasing of federal land to the world's many many oil and gas drilling companies. Now on top of this cash infusion, there's also a little bit more regulation that's being put on drilling behind the scenes. Specifically, the only sticks that you're going to find in this sea of carrots. If you engage in practices like flaring and venting your oil fields, basically burning toxins and then letting them flow, well you're going to have to pay an additional royalty fee now. Also, this bill introduces the first industry-wide methane emissions cap. If you go over that cap, there are escalating fees associated with your flaws. Now, of course, all these financial changes are leading to the main event, a massive amount of federal land leases going up to auction. Now, here's the rub with that auction. A bunch of those auctions were shut down earlier in the year, citing a lack of interest. Well, now that we're reapproaching markets with 5x prices and increased royalties, things aren't exactly getting more enticing for people. America is certainly listing those lands for sale, but there's no guarantee of sales actually materializing. So, at the end of the day, those are the three main things this bill does. Pay people to act responsibly, provide money for people who want to start green ventures, and revamp the drilling auction system to make it more profitable for the government, as well as put in the few new regulations behind the scenes. Good news though, paying people to do good seems to be an effective strategy. Without any new action from Congress on top of what they just passed or the president, economic modelers at Rhodium Group estimated that climate emissions were on track to be somewhere between 24% and 35% lower by 2030 than they were in 2005. That much lower than 2005? That is huge! Now according to that study, the reason for this is because energy credits are so generous and the leases aren't enticing to big oil producers as they would have been a few decades ago. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to like, subscribe, ring that bell so the freedom will continue to ring, and do all that other funny YouTube stuff that we always beg for. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.